Hey guys, Chris here with the Good Old Gamer. So today we're going to do something a little bit more fun. We've been diving really deep into tech news and all kinds of other news out there. Hasn't really been a lot of fun. And isn't gaming supposed to be about fun? I mean, I think it is. So thanks to a viewer out there, his name's Ed Sherwood. He went ahead and sent me a Radeon 5970. To be clear, this is a Radeon HD 5970 GPU. Now, I don't know if I can get a good picture of that, but this is a dual GPU video card. So this is uh, basically Crossfire on a single board. And this was the most powerful graphics card of 2009. So I was like, you know what? Let's do a fun video and see how this GPU holds up here today in 2019, a good 10 years later. So real quick, we'll go over some of the basic specs of the 5970. So as you can see here, everything is two times. It says if you have two GPUs, they're just fused onto one board. This card came out November 18th, 2009 at $699. Each die comes in at 334 millimeters squared and it has a TDP of 294 watts. Jumping on over to the 5870, we can see that it's the exact same GPU. It's the same die, same everything, except the clock speeds are a little bit different. On the 5970, it comes in at 725 and 4 gigahertz on the memory, whereas the 5870 comes in at 850 and 4800 megahertz on the RAM. Big difference is just a single 5870 comes in at 188 watts TDP. So to keep this under 300 watts, that's the reason why they had to lower these clocks. And the 5970 also likely has much higher binned silicon as well. So this isn't going to be a typical test. I'm not going to be using any charts. I used an HDMI capture of gameplay with RevaTuner statistics on there. So you can see what's going on. And we'll discuss that throughout the video that you're seeing. But I wanted to go ahead and just show you guys how this actually holds up here today. I started off with more modern titles and worked my way back. All footage was captured via HDMI, so there's no, you know, background task like OBS or anything taking up any resources. This was all done off of the uh, system via HDMI capture. Now, the system I decided to use for testing is my i7-2600K system. I figured I'd probably need to use Windows 7 for this, and that system's really good for that. It has a lot of drivers and everything should just work. However, I was able to get this GPU to work on Windows 10 with their latest beta drivers. And it even has the brand new adrenaline look and feel, so it looks like a modern day graphics card, which is really kind of neat. I was not expecting that. However, you do need to use the more modern beta drivers, not the last official release, which is like 15.7.1. That one did not work with Crossfire. So just giving you guys a heads up if you want to test this out yourself. So anyway, back to the test system. i7 2600K. I was running it overclocked at 4.4 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 at 2133. And then, of course, we had the 5970. So kicking off the testing, I decided, well, we can't really do Rage 2, and that's being one of the newest games that I have, so instead, let's try Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Of course, I want to test all these games at 1080p, because, you know, why would you want a game at less than that in 2019? However, a lot of these games are going to be quite demanding, so with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, went with the lowest possible settings to see what we could get. And that's what we got, just a blank screen. So unfortunately, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was not playable on the 5970. Next up, I tried Far Cry 5. Now this game did run. You can notice by looking at the GPU utilization, it's only using one of the two GPU cores, so it does not support Crossfire, at least for the 5970. And performance just isn't really there. Next up, I decided to try Battlefield 1. As you guys can see, we're still only using one GPU core, so Crossfire is not working here. The game's actually semi-playable, even with just one GPU core. Now, of course, this is at the lowest settings, but still at 1080p. So honestly, I was kind of surprised by the performance here, considering it's only using one of the GPU cores.
Following that up, I decided to try Titanfall 2. Now, this uses the older Source engine, so I figured, hey, this might run pretty well. Once again, Crossfire is not working in this game, so we're only using a single GPU core. But this game's actually running pretty good. As you guys can see, we're in the 50s uh, as far as frames per second go, so that's actually pretty solid. And if you wanted to go ahead and get a smoother experience, we could always drop resolution scaling if need be. But overall, this actually ran pretty well, and I was actually pretty surprised about that. The next game, Rise of the Tomb Raider. I wanted to see if we can get any Tomb Raider game to run, so I figured I'd try this one out. And unfortunately, after incurring a few seizures recording this video footage here, what you're seeing is what was being displayed. This isn't some sort of capture uh, error or anything. Nope, it was just flashing back and forth, and it was pretty, pretty rough. Performance, I mean, we are utilizing both GPUs, so Crossfire is working here, and performance is surprisingly good considering you know, how old this video card is. However, that image quality is quite bad. And of course, we are running at the lowest settings. So while technically playable, I certainly would not recommend this. Alrighty, so next I decided to try The Witcher 3. This game came out in 2015, and it is utilizing both GPU cores. However, the performance, while technically I would consider this playable, you can see from that frame time graph that this is not an ideal situation right here. Alright, so next up, I decided to fire up uh, Battlefield 4 and see what sort of uh, performance we can get out of this. And this one is utilizing both GPU cores. I was running this one on medium because it's a little bit older game now. It's early for this generation or late last generation, however you want to look at it. But this actually runs really, really well. This game ran extremely well on the 5970. And considering this game came out four years after the launch of the 5970, this was actually pretty solid, running at 100 frames per second most of the time, or beyond. Wouldn't really be a benchmark test without some crisis. So we decided to uh, use Crisis 3, which also came out in 2013, same as Battlefield. And this one also is using the, both cores and Crossfire. And performance here is actually really, really damn good. So once again, for a GPU that's four years old at the time that this game came out, the performance that we're getting here is actually really freaking good. Initiating burnout, over. Copy that, Romeo 1. We've got to get you in there, inside the dome. There's a war starting. The Alpha Seth? No. Remember those guys who shot you for the cave vaults in Siberia? And then the last game I decided to test, which is also the oldest, Battlefield Bad Company 2. This uh, game came out not too long after the 5970's release, and of course, the game runs really well. Crossfire is enabled, and we're getting 100 frames per second or better throughout, so obviously this game is running really, really well as well. Well, alrighty guys, there you have it. We kind of went from games from modern year all the way back to about 2009, and we could definitely see that this GPU cannot hang today. This is no threat to the new Radeon 5700. Even though it's named higher, it's definitely not faster. Poking fun at AMD's naming scheme aside, this video card actually did perform better than I expected in some more modern titles. Early current generation games like Battlefield 4 ran really, really well, and even some other games where we were only using a single GPU core, um, such as Titanfall 2, that actually ran pretty well considering the age of this graphics card and how much newer that game is. However, I would not recommend this to anybody looking for a modern system. Even if you can get it for like 10 or $20, it's a 250 watt TDP card. 
it's just not worth it. Compared to something like an RX 570, I mean, you can pick those up reasonably cheap, and it's going to be at least two or three times faster than this thing. However, if you are building a retro machine, you want like an old Windows 7, a dedicated old Windows 7 machine, or a Windows XP machine, this could be a really good option for you. Because when you have Crossfire kicking in, the performance on this thing is amazing, even in much more modern games that it wasn't really designed for. So I was really impressed with that when Crossfire kicked in, the amount of performance we got out of this thing. Now my model only had one gigabyte of VRAM. This is the reason why I kept all my games at low or lowest, except for the older titles, I bumped those up to medium because, well, even though it's two times one gigabyte, it's not two gigabytes of VRAM. It's only one gigabyte per core. So we are limited there. Now there is a two gigabyte model that might perform a little bit better, but I wouldn't expect it to do a whole lot better than this one right here. So in summary, it was a lot of fun to play with and we got to see what games could run and the basically the state of Crossfire and more modern games, not looking too hot. However, games from even just three or four years ago, those seem to run much, much better and all seem to support Crossfire in some way, shape or form. Now, this is more of a fun video. There's no real takeaway to this, but I really enjoyed doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed checking out some of this old hardware because I forgot I actually had this bad boy laying around and we could check this out next. And this is the Radeon 6990, which is basically the successor to the 5870. Now, this one does have two gigabytes per GPU core, so that might help out. And it is a newer version of the Terascale architecture, so that might be something interested interesting to take a look at and see how it performs in the same games. That one I might do a few charts on. Maybe I'll just do side by sides. I don't know. I kind of like doing it this way where there's just gameplay. You can see how it's going in real time. You have the little frame time graph. You can clearly see how the performance was going. So I kind of like that. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you like revisiting old hardware, especially like the King of the Rings from back in the day? Do you find this stuff interesting? I do. I like messing around with this, especially early DirectX 11 cards because they can technically run most modern games as games today are still using DirectX 11 primarily, unfortunately. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you like the video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. And if you want to support the channel for as little as $1 a month, you can become a patron. We can have some chats on Discord, and that really does help me out as well. And that's all I have for today, and I will catch you guys in the next video.